Good morning. How good it is to be together this morning. Let's just briefly, quickly um, pull ourselves together and get ready to worship God. First, please look for the prayer pads and pass them forward. Maybe they're already up here, the joys and concerns. Also the blue pew book. Um, sign in and let us know with whom we're worshiping. And if you have other messages you want to give to us, you can make those notes there. Uh, and let's see what announcements we have. Susan. And they really mean it. They really would love to have other people. Susan has actually secretly taped all of you singing and has verified that you are all capable of singing in the choir. So there's no entrance exam. Just come out and enjoy. Give it a try for a couple months. And you thought that was just a place you put your communion cup. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> are there other announcements that you have this morning? Um, you can read through the bulletin, obviously, make notes of things. Um, we will, in fact, be on vacation. We are leaving this evening. We'll be back on September 10th. The protocol for that is that if there is um, questions, issue, um, problems, an emergency, that you uh, would be in contact. <laughs> Pardon? Sorry. <laughs> You're about ready to say Diana Mason. She's over there shaking her head. No. Diana Mason. And laughing. She oh. knows. Um, that... <laughs> She's our clerk of session, and so she makes the arrangements. She contacts us if necessary. She makes sure that things happen. You can always text us. We always look at our text. Um, so if you have an emergency, if you have something personal going on, please feel free to go ahead and contact us, even if we're on vacation. But if you're writing about, how many cupcakes did you want me to make in two months? We will talk to you on September 11th, okay? Um, but if it's urgent, please don't hesitate to let us know if something important And, and we may gently, nicely remind you of that in a reply text. Right, right. <laughs> or we might not reply at all. Exactly. No. <laughs> but please, you all know this. We've been together long enough. If you have a real emergency, please let us know so that we can pray for you and do whatever we can to help. Are there other um, announcements this morning? Let's worship Almighty God. Join with me in the call to worship. Everyone who serves God, come and offer thanks. Everyone who is gathered in this place, lift your hands and praise God. Thank God for your love to me. All who serve in this place, who serve our God, come and shout praises. Thank, Thank you, God, God, for your love, love to others. others. Praise the name of our God who is kind and good. Thank you, God, for your love endures forever. Let's stand and sing our opening hymn together.
our lips while keeping our hearts from the Holy One? Do we deceive ourselves, thinking we are religious rather than living faithful lives? Let us confess to God our sin, trusting in the one who makes us whole. Let's spend a few minutes in silence with our Savior and our Creator. Let's pray. And now we pray together, saying, Holy One of leaders and little children, we hear your words every day, but rarely live them out. Our anger roars like a flooded creek, but our forgiveness drips like a rusty faucet. Our impetuous tongues rush to judgment, while our words of hope sound like a sluggish soundtrack. We listen with impatient ears to the cries of the poor. Father of lights, may your mercy fall on us like a summer shower on parched grass. May your hope overflow our hearts. May your beloved child, Jesus Christ, speak to us and call us to life. Hear now the good news. Listen and understand the voice of the beloved speaks to us implanting the word of hope, the word of grace, and the word of forgiveness into our hearts. We listen and understand. Every gift comes from God, especially the gifts of mercy and love. Thanks be to God, for in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. You want to invite the children forward? Kids, want to come forward, please? I was thinking about cooking. Do you have any of these in your household? Maybe something like this? No? Maybe something like this, something that's printed out? No. What about this? No, you don't have anything like this. You might not have any of these particular things, but I'll bet you have something like it in your house. If you ask your mom and your dad, I'll bet if they go into the kitchen, they'll say, oh yeah, we have a cookbook. We have something with rival crock pot recipes for stone cookers. I'll bet. I'll bet people here, some of them probably have this, the Women's Association Cookbook of 1985 from Monongahela. And in it, you can flip through it and you can find names that maybe your mom or dad might say, oh yeah, there's Mary Hollitz. Well, Mary Hollitz, we, you know, some people here know who she is. And here's, here's, here's one you know. Here, here's Chicken Delicious by Susan Watkins. Chicken Delicious. Susan, is it delicious? Ron, can you verify? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, reprints are available. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, Debbie, who was the office manager then, uh, helped Reverend Sharon put together a cookbook of things that she made for their Thursday morning Bible studies because people like them so much. And then this guy, he's on TV. He, he does all kinds of things on TV with cooking on the Food Network. I brought these with me because this morning we're going to read from James and he says to be not just listeners but to be doers of the word. Now I thought about this and I read about a guy who had to confess in the, in the process of finding this, this idea that he actually owned all kinds of cookbooks. You know why he owned the cookbooks? Because he liked to dream and he liked to open them up this one unfortunately does not have what I'm looking for in it. Maybe I'll find something here. No, nope. Not going to get any help there. Oh, I'll get some help here. He liked looking at the pictures. He thought this just looked delicious. He loved looking at the pictures. And 
so he'd buy cookbook. He'd buy cookbook after cookbook after cookbook. But he didn't cook. And so he never had a chance to taste what any of these things tasted like. And so he could look up a recipe for that barbecued beef sandwiches and he could say, that looks pretty good for lunch. But he didn't take the book and open it up and follow the recipe and make it. So he never got to experience the joy of tasting the final product. This morning I I'm going to be talking from James about not just listening to the word, but doing it. Not just holding the Bible in your hand, but opening it and reading it and seeing what it has to say and following it for the instructions for our lives. Not just looking at a pretty picture of what we'd like our life to be like, but living it out in faith. Not just saying that we're a Christian with our mouth, but doing it with everything that we have. So that's my children's message this morning. So I want you to think about how the Bible is your recipe book and how important it is that we're reading it and we're listening to it and we're studying it and we're doing what it tells us to say. All right, so what do you have to pray about this morning? Yes, a successful trip. You're back. Your mom gave you a cookbook. Excellent. You can cook with mom. Excellent. Have you made some things from it yet? Okay, not yet. Soon enough. Any other things we want to pray about? Yeah, how was the first week of school? Good. Good. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Sometimes that's the best course, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's pray together, okay? Lord God, uh, I thank you for each one of these kids. I thank you for their first week back to school, for all the challenges that come with that, for all the excitement of seeing friends perhaps they haven't seen for the whole summer, but also for getting back to school work. I thank you, Lord, that you give us a recipe in our lives through your word that speaks to us, that gives us instruction that tells us not only what to think, but also what to do guide and direct each one of these kids. Keep them safe. We pray, Lord, for their teachers. We ask, Lord, that you would give grace to their parents and that you would nurture them uh, in greater faith for you. Amen. Okay. Thank you very much. At this point, let's stand together and share the peace of Jesus Christ with those around us.
shout for joy unto the Lord, worship Him with gladness. Let all the earth bring songs of praise, telling of His greatness. Know that the Lord we praise is God, He is God our Maker. And we are his, a people called sheep within his pasture. Oh, enter in his gates with praise, his hearts with great thanksgiving. For he is God, his love endures morning after morning. Shout for joy unto the Lord, see the way is open To live in peace beneath His grace, every sin forgiven For he who knew no mark of sin took our sin upon him that we might be the righteousness of the God of heaven. Oh, enter in his gates with praise, his courts with great thanksgiving. For he is God, his love endures morning after morning. Shout for joy unto the Lord through the hours of darkness. For day by day his faithful hand ever stays upon us. With every morning rise we kneel, all our lives we offer to be a living sacrifice holy to the Savior. Oh, enter in his gates with praise, his courts with great thanksgiving. For he is good, his love endures morning after morning. Oh, enter in his gates with praise, his courts with great thanksgiving. For he is good, his love endures morning after morning. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we offer now you, to you the gifts of our time, our talents, our treasures in gratitude, in gratitude for all that you have done for us. We offer the first fruits of our labors that you might use them for your purposes. We pray, Lord, for our congregation. We ask that you would grant us vision for how you would have us speak to our community the words of faith, the words of life. Bless now the gifts and the givers. Amen.
here is this side. Is there one over on this side? No? Okay, on our prayer, on our prayer pad this morning we have praise reports for a good start to a new school year. For good weather, someone has written. For laughter, someone else has written. Are there other praise reports you'd like to lift up this morning? You have one. Okay, and there's another one behind you. Yes. Oh, I can bring my mic down so you can. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> uh, First in love there. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I went to the doctors about two weeks ago. I got a clean report, and I had atrial fib, and he says it is gone, and that doesn't go away automatically. So I call that a healing from the Lord. Great. Thank you. That was a joke in jest. <laughs> I saw your hand up, Jeff. So we're thanking God that uh, Joe's, Joe is home and that he's doing well. Others. Another good thing? Come on. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> oh, really? Huh. 37 years. Wow. Or so we're thanking God for modern are there other, uh, any other phrases? Under our prayer concerns, we have... Oh, sorry. Susan. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, doesn't have very, yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Now, there's a story to be told there, I'm sure. Okay. Catch up on that. Uh, under prayer concerns, we have for Doug, who uh, needs a who needs a lung transplant. So we're praying for Doug who needs a lung transplant. For uh, a new job, for Betty Gerba, who's in rehab. For Barb Saxton, who has health concerns. For Bill Gerba, who is struggling with cancer. For all who are having medical problems for uh, Rich and Barb Laurentis uh, on the passing of Barb's mom. Uh, yeah, Flo, Flo passed away on Friday. And so we're thanking God for her life and that uh, she is safe now with Jesus. Uh, for a friend's mother with cancer, uh, I'd also lift up, I was talking to Charlotte Dickey last night. Actually, that's a praise report. Charlotte is doing much better. Uh, she did not have a heart attack when they thought she was in the hospital. And so, She's just, she's getting some rehab and is doing well. But she lifted up her uh, sister-in-law, Judy Montaigne, who, uh, who just lost her son, Ed. So we're praying for Ed's passing for her family. Uh, also, we want to lift up Roy Schultz, who uh, was in the hospital this week. We're praying for Roy and for healing for him. Are there others that we want to lift up in prayer this morning? I think we also should be keeping Dick Backus in prayer. Uh, Dick is fighting cancer, and we want to pray for him. Courage and strength for him as he faces that. Are there others? Let's go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, it is not that uh, the people that we have lifted up this morning are the end of the list. Even as I sit here, I think of others that I should have lifted up for prayer, who need a word of encouragement, who need a, a, a sense of your strong presence around them, who are looking for your miracles, who are seeking your healing. We pray, Lord, for uh, the families that surround them. We ask, O oh God, that uh, in your divine mercy, you would just shower them with your compassion that you would give them a vision and an understanding of the ways in which you are providing for each of our care. We pray this morning knowing that there are so many things that feel like they are out of our control, and that's because they are. We place our lives in your hands. We trust in you. That doesn't mean sometimes that the stories go how we would write them. 
That means that sometimes we have to struggle in faith to trust in the direction that they do go. But we pray in courage this morning. We pray knowing that our prayers are ones that avail much with you, that you hear us and that you are in the midst of our very lives. Working for our future, building your plan for eternity, and seeking to redeem our broken world. We pray, Lord, this day for our nation, for its leadership. We pray, Lord, for those who are in, uh, in all branches of government. And we pray, Lord, for those who are starting the process of seeking election. We ask, Lord, for wise discernment. We pray, Lord, that uh, that candidate that follows in your will, that listens to your way, would be the one that would eventually be the one that would lead us. We pray, Lord, for integrity in those who we trust. We ask, O oh God, that you would continue uh, to lead our nation. And we pray, Lord, for those around the world who seek uh, the strength that we have as a community of faith. We pray, Lord, that we would be missionaries, that we would be strong in displaying uh, your works to the world. Lord, this morning we lift up families. We pray, Lord, for marriages, and we pray, Lord, for parents who are seeking to raise their children upright in you. We ask, O oh God, that you would continue to give them the, the stamina to be able to do that task. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of our children, uh, for the voices that they lift up to you in praise and for some, for the ways in which many times they show us the kingdom of God. We ask all of these things, praying the prayers of praise that we have lifted up on our prayer pad, those of sincere concern, knowing that you know each by heart. And we lift them to you using the words that your son gave us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our next hymn.
Our scripture lesson today is taken from the book of James, the first chapter beginning in verse 17. Listen now for God's living word for us today. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chooses to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God's desire desires. Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looked intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God the Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after the orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Lord God, bless now your word to us, and speak through my words by your Holy Spirit, not by anything of my account, but by the power of your Spirit at work in each one of us that we would see you, Jesus. Amen. It was that resident of Stratford-on-Avon, William Shakespeare, who in Macbeth has his king, has the king's wife so guilty, sick over murder, that she cannot sleep. Fantasies cloud her mind. Redrawing of the past comes to heart. Macbeth has her consult a doctor. Canst thou now minister to a mind diseased, he asked. Pluck from the memory a root, rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet antidote cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff weighed down upon her heart. Wow, we don't write like that anymore. There's so much of that, though, to say in our day. Guilt emotional upheaval, things that we struggle with. And Jesus Christ and his word offers to us these words of James. First we are told, know this, be quick to listen, to allow facts to come into your thinking. I read a story about a guy who, he was so taken by the ways in which one of his relatives could just seemingly pick up something and fix it. And he thought, how is he able to do that? I don't understand. Whether it be wiring, whether it be fixing the lawnmower, taking the dishwasher apart. How did he do it? Then he realized that he just went to the library and he read a book about it. These days it was like me yesterday on my kitchen floor taking the front off of my refrigerator so I could fix some drain that was plugged in the back. You, you look it up. The Bible is this amazing library, this amazing collection of 66 books of facts about your origin and mine facts about our nature, who we are, that have all the stories, some sorted. Life, death, it's all in there. Marriage, 
people who struggle in their youth, people who struggle in their old age. It is an implanted word. And so James says, listen, hear the word. Use your brain. What you've been given this, uh, I don't know, how much, three and a half pounds of mass up here on top of your head. That, uh, that guy called, where's my kids? Oh, they're gone. I can't, they can't even imagine how I'm going to butcher this. That Poirot, <laughs> that Agatha Christie character, calls those gray cells. How many different neurons bouncing around? How many different operations your mind is already doing just sitting there listening to me this morning? Capable of over 800 inputs a second never shuts off. You go to sleep, but your mind just keeps right on cranking away. Think about how reliable this amazing thing that God gave you is. What's the average? 75 years that people live? And they say that we use about 10% of our brain in that time. Use your head. That's what James is saying. Use your mind. Let yourself hear what God speaks to you. And then after that, then after that, the next words are, be slow to speak. You see a healthy ordering right there. First, let me get my head on straight. And let me be let, let me not be slow about that. Let me be quick about that. Let me be on the ball about getting my head on straight. Let that be my focus. And then, slowly start to speak about it. That's what the Bible is saying. The Bible is not, the Bible is not, is saying to you and I, you want to learn to swim. You've never gone swimming before. So what you choose to do then is you go up to a swimming pool and you jump in the deepest part of the water and you see how it goes. No! You think and then you figure out how you learn to swim using the strokes. Isn't it the same in this world outside? If you go to look for a job, those kids coming out of college, they present their diplomas. They show what they've learned. And it is based on that learning. Understanding some facts and then the experience that allows them to show whether they can put those things into practice. So be quick to listen, slow to speak. Here comes the favorite one, right? Slow to anger. So we've used our intellect, and we are now speaking. Now we're talking about our emotions. You know, anger is a pretty strong emotion. And it's not the only one. Of course, you know, you, we have wholesome feelings that God has given us, right? Fear, joy, anger is one, but disgust, happiness, confusion, imagination, Feelings are powerful in a human being. The word emotion comes from that Latin word meaning to move. They move us along sometimes. Just but but we're supposed to be we're supposed to be cautious because scripture tells us we're not supposed to be blown to and fro like by the wind, like a, like a sailboat. And isn't that sometimes what our emotions do to us? We get caught by them and then all of a sudden we're blown over here and we're not thinking correctly. It's like the guy who wakes up in the morning. He hasn't had a very good night's sleep. He's tossed and turned all around. He turns to his wife and he says, you know, I don't feel like being married this morning just because he's not in a good mood. But in turn, feelings don't have anything to do with it. James isn't saying, you and I can't feel. He's saying, 
There's an order to things. Get your thinking correct. Don't speak too quickly. And if you think your feelings are telling you the way to go, then reset your clock. Because that's not the way it works. But isn't it strange? Isn't it strange how you and I live our lives completely backwards to that? How often is it that you get up in the morning and say, Oh man, I don't feel like doing this. It's awful. I don't think I can get myself going. Or I don't feel the strength to get on doing whatever I'm supposed to do. We don't wake up in the morning and say to ourselves, what is the truth that my mind is telling me that should drive how I listen to what's going on in my heart and in the world? And then know what I'm supposed to then speak before I let my emotions, my feelings get the best of me. Uh, we usually let our feelings get the best of us. And then we're saying exactly how we're feeling. And then that seems to be driving our train. But you see, that's not the way God has it planned for us. He didn't give us the feeling so that we wouldn't have them. He gave us the feeling so that we would be able to put them in a sense of order with the rest of how he's speaking to us first. How he then wants us to speak to others second. And how he wants us to use and understand our emotions third. We get it all backwards though. We get it all mixed up. It's easy for us to do that, isn't it? Jimmy's a child who's studying music, and he doesn't feel like going to his lesson that day. And his parents decide that he doesn't need to go to his lesson, and they say that he can just do whatever he wants, whatever he feels like. And 20 years from now, he doesn't understand how to order his life because it's driven by entirely how he feels. Instead of what he thinks he should do how he should act. James is all about these things. James wants us to act. In fact, nearly 500 years ago, the great reformer Martin Luther did not like the epistle of James. In fact, he hated it. Well, I shouldn't say hated it. He called it a straw epistle. There were other reformers that just wanted to take it out of the Bible altogether because it talks more about our works, our deeds, what we do with ourselves as a reflection of our faith. Martin Luther's stuck in Romans and it's like, your faith is entirely, it's your faith alone that saves you. And that's true. But if, my belief is if there's not some actions behind it, then your faith is a lie to begin with. And if you're just sitting there and you're just having things be an intellectual exercise, then you're not living a faith. If you're not doing, what did he say in the end? If you're not caring for the orphans, if you're not taking care of the widows, if you're not dealing with the poor, if you're not helping the hungry, if you're not clothing the naked, if you're not reaching out to those who are in prison, if you're not helping those who are dealing with addiction, if you're not reaching to those who are having struggles in their marriage, if you're not nurturing children, then you're not living out a lively faith. Because you didn't feel like it. Because it might be inconvenient. Because you'd rather do something else. And yet if you stop for long enough, and you listen with your heart, with your mind, to what the scriptures tell you that you're supposed to be doing, if you walk around and you're slow to speak and deliberate in your doing, then all of a sudden your feelings don't get so far ahead of you and you don't lose track of where you're supposed to be or what you're supposed to be doing. Think about it. Think about how Jesus was in the garden. He was there in the garden of Gethsemane and he says, not my will but yours. He didn't say, you know, Jesus, he didn't say, he didn't say, God, you know, I really don't feel like going to the cross. I'd rather not. So I'm not going to. 
He said, not my will, but yours. Was he angry about sin? Yeah. But he put God's will in front of that. He trusted. He walked as a person should walk in faith. And so as I close this morning, I use the words of a hymn that we frequently sing in church by Henry Emerson Fosdick. God of grace and God of glory, on your people or your power, crown your ancient church's story, bring its bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the gift of your salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom. Grant us courage. Serving you who we adore. Serving you whom we adore. May it indeed be reflected in each of our lives. And let us pray. Lord God, we come here this morning seeking your wisdom. You have placed it in the words of the writer of the God, the writer of the book of James, who gives us sound advice for our lives of faith. That we should listen for you. How little we quiet ourselves. How little we steal ourselves from the things we feel like we'd like to do or feel like we want to do that we would quiet ourselves and listen for you. We pray, Lord, that you would allow us to do that. That each person in this room would take some time during their day, today, but not just today, tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that. And they would set aside some piece of time, no matter how small, some piece of time where they would be quiet, where they might open your word, and where they would listen. And then maybe that you would work through their mind and allow them to slowly speak of the faith. Maybe to their own heart, maybe to someone else. But that in that, that they would reflect your truth. And lastly, that we would be slow in our anger towards each other that we would be quick to make right when we say something we ought to. Continue, Lord, to guide and direct us. Nurture us as we use our minds, as we use our actions, as we have these gifts of feelings, that they may be in right relationship with you and right relationship with each other. This we pray most humbly. Amen. Would you stand with me together as we affirm our faith? We believe in Jesus Christ, the eternal Word made flesh. He is the long-awaited Savior, fully human and fully divine, conceived by the Spirit of God and born of the Virgin Mary, sent by God to reconcile the world to himself. We believe that Jesus, in the events of his earthly life, his temptations and suffering, his teaching and miracles, his battles with demons and talks with sinners, made present in deed and in word the coming rule of God. We believe that the church is sent with the gospel of the kingdom to make disciples of all nations, to feed the hungry, and to proclaim the assurance that in the name of Christ there is forgiveness of sins, and new life for all who repent and believe, to tell the news that our world belongs to God. Our closing hymn is, O Jesus, I Have Promised.
pour upon your people your wisdom that we might seek to follow and to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in each and everything that we do. We pray, O oh God, for the power of your Spirit alive in us, that it would continue to fire us in directions that would lead even closer in our walk with you. Now be with us as we part from this place. Strengthen us as a community of faith and bind us together as we are apart from each other, even in distance and time. And bless us as we go. For we ask these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.